Liberty's in its seventh year. Yep. Tell us how it all started. Well, where do we start? So well, I came to Brighton on a one-way ticket from Wales. That was my kind of shot at the music industry at the time because I was in bands and I was like playing around looking for an opportunity and I could see just London. London was a scene back then. Bright light. The bright London. lights and the dizzy heights of London. It was all happening there and there were some great bands coming out after the Strokes had made their debut. There was all sorts of interesting indie, shrindy stuff coming out. <laughs> but then I, I, I basically came down and I thought, I'm going to seek opportunity without having to live in London and Brighton was the place. So We're headed to Brighton for great things. Yeah, so I ended Greatness. up with uh, <laughs> just on a wing and a prayer, really. I had nothing. And yeah, I remember when I met you, you literally had a mattress in an empty room scattered around the bed were poetry, books and poetry, and a guitar. <laughs> the, the sort of cliche. But I literally had nothing. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, I had nothing. So uh, it was like plastic bags and clothes and for a couple of co numbers of people that I kind of knew. You know, I stayed on sofas for a while, try to look around, forget any kind of work I could. And that one day, that moment, I stumbled upon Green Door Store. <laughs> uh, and then luckily you listen to my demos and it, i'd been on radio at the time got a bbc radio one play so hopefully that might have spun it but you listened to it and uh managed to get me a gig mm. so yeah so i had a really successful night in brighton at the green door every sunday sunday service it was amazing obviously bands used to come in all the time asking for gigs it is an iconic venue for independent artists in brighton still is and you came in and I remember thinking, okay, write your name down. You gave me a piece of paper, I stuffed it in my pocket. And then I remember actually listening to your music a few days later and thinking, this is actually really cool. It's like dream pop vibe, tick, you know, stuff that I really liked at that time. So I remember actually calling you back and saying like, come in, come and do a gig. Someone's dropped out on Sunday and you did. And then that's where our blossoming love, friendship, romance, whatever started really, wasn't it? And then fast forward a few years on, I was managing you guys, your band, and then what happened? Wow, it was downhill from that. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we've got a lot of opportunities with you. You managed to present us to some good labels and we got yeah. some, some signings and things like that. Yeah, yeah. And then we did some tours around Germany and, and it was great. Yeah, yeah. So the band split and reformed and that kind of stuff like bands always do, but we managed to get yeah, some amazing experiences out of it. Mm. And um, well, we did end up signing to a label yeah. and had a bit of frustration. Yeah. One name names. But we, we, it, was, it, it, are, no. it was a deal where it was 50 50. <laughs> I, I'm sure there's a lot of bands and artists out there who got, got, had these deals. Uh, we signed up thinking there was going to be loads of marketing, loads of promo. We ended up doing all the promo and marketing. And that's where you came in because you had a old black book of contacts. You knew loads of people in the industry at yeah. that time. You, yeah. And your radio show. and Yeah. I was doing loads of stuff in the music industry at the time. So I had my, obviously my own night, a blog, a radio show, managing artists, managing festival stages. It wasn't my like nine to five or bloody nine to nine as it is now. And then, yeah, we basically once again felt very frustrated by the experience we'd had from the label. Um, you know, I come, came around to release day and yet again, it just felt like, you know, there was lack of energy and passion from the other side. Like we'd done loads from our side. But once again, we felt let down. We even got a, pr a press company, sorry, a PR company involved, didn't we? Yeah. Do you remember for an EP and they did a really shocking job you know no fault to anyone in particular it's just that they had loads of artists on their roster we weren't a priority we could tell we weren't a priority they did a shocking job and I had to jump in and help didn't I so I rewrote the press release yeah. I repitched it and then suddenly the result you know the opportunities started flooding in for you guys yeah I think that was the big like eye opener was when you managed to get responses back where we thought it was impossible who were like blogs were the big thing back then it was kind of yeah late noughties early early sorry still love a blog yeah still love a blog <laughs> it's still popular don't get me wrong it's still very relevant you need written content like yeah. that that goes without saying yeah but at the time that was like the hottest ticket it was like you knew all the the big places like the yeah know, it was like the best fit yeah like clash, clash email consequence for still... sound pop justice yeah. all of them and suddenly we started appearing on all of them and it was like wow this is like relationships this is like people you know this is like hustle yeah not just the music and i think 
some as an artist you can get so 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 in love with the, with what you're doing and it's like your baby and you, you put it out there if it doesn't get the answer that you want the response you want you, you start to think oh am i failing at this and, that, and i think knowing that it takes that persistence takes relationships it takes um the consistency of hard work dedication and all that kind of stuff as well as making yeah. music it, it can be done and yeah. like you kind of proved that so that's yeah it's i mean you know don't get me wrong promoting an independent artist is really hard especially a debut artist because most of the time you're pitching this press release to a journalist editor whatever uh, producer a radio show and that you know they will never have heard of them and it's down to your personal contacts that they're going to open your email or listen to the track or whatever so it's hard work it's you know but it takes a lot of passion a lot of um drive momentum um you can't just sit around it's completely different when you work with established artists it's actually the press are coming to you for that opportunity but when you're push pitching an independent artist you're going to them but you've got to do it in a really tasteful and very respectful way yeah. um and i i realized that with them um, promoting your music that yeah it, you know it's it's patience that's what it was and that's when we thought hang on a minute if we can do it for you guys who else could we do it for Mm -hmm. And that's where Liberty was born, wasn't it, really? Yeah. Hello, behold, we had another artist from Brighton who Look came out to the street. <laughs> shout, shout, shout. <laughs> uh, yeah, and you did an amazing job for them as well. Yeah. I hope that, that you thought that. But yeah, I mean, I like, uh, it, <laughs> it was like, this is groundbreaking. We, we, it came down to team as well. We needed to build a team. Once we've got the right people together, we sourced the right people. But also to make the, the artist feel like there was someone in the room with them, even though we were virtual. It felt like there's there's someone always there. Yeah, that's that's what people want, don't they? Yeah. Normally, as an independent artist, you probably you may not have a manager. You're probably going to feel quite alone. So we were able to provide that stability and that infrastructure that maybe they kind of never had. And we genuinely care. We really care about the artists. We understand how difficult it is for them, how painstaking it is for them to kind of hand over this music that they've been working on and writing and producing and mastering over the last few months. We get it because you're an artist. Yeah, yeah. You get the in intricacy around it, don't you? And yeah. the, the kind of, you know, that, that feeling of like, can I trust this this person to actually do a good job? And yeah. you know, we want everybody at Liberty to walk away feeling like they've had the best service. Yeah, exactly. That's it for us. Yeah, Spotify was blowing up at the time. I remember. Yeah, because we did no start just as press, didn't we? That was the only service we did. Yeah. And you were the one that was like, I think we need to jump on the Spotify. I remember. I remember <laughs> literally being in South by Southwest, one of these talks, and there was a talk about in, in I think it was the SoundCloud talk and there was a spotify talk and yeah i went to the soundcloud one and it was a little bit sparse it wasn't that full spotify rammed i thought like, what, what's going on here there's something really interesting happening yeah. so yeah the rise of streaming and it was like it seems like the norm now but back then it was like the new thing and there was no one yeah. actually helping promote play uh playlisting was a new thing it was like yeah. Uh, you know christopher columbus discovering new lands <laughs> and, and and that's how we we came about we we decided to do this thing that no one was doing mm. back then sometimes i hear this quite a lot but you can't pay to be on playlists now how would you answer that question the curators need to love your music and, and it's a relationship right they like they like you they support you it's a two-way thing you promote them yeah and, and and i think that's what we always encourage artists it's like we're connecting the dots. We're joining you with the curators and the influencers and, and together you work to promote each other. And it's like this symbiosis of like promotion and mm. you create an ecosystem of fans. And yeah. I think it's all about that really. What about your entrepreneurial journey? Mm -hmm. Right, so I'm an artist myself and I, yeah. and I obviously launched Liberty. It is an entrepreneurial shot at doing yeah. something. Yeah. Right, so it's like I had to set up a business. Same way as a band, you, you, it's a bit, it's a, business effectively if you've got people you got to look after your team in the same way that you know you you, you found a, a business that provides services to artists yeah so tell us about oh, your <laughs> kind of entrepreneurial journey so, as well. my entrepreneurial journey always wanted to be in the music industry deep dived into the corporate world when i left uni um started working for in the i was in the finance sector the charity sector the the um where else was it Mar i was sort of marketing as well for various roles but i always wanted to be in the music industry always and actually it wasn't until i hit my 30s that i made it into the industry and most people think 
you're mad, it's too late. I actually had an ex-boyfriend say to me, you're never going to get in the industry, in industry. it's too late now. Um, and I just thought, fuck you, I'm going to do it. And that's what I did, basically. But there's so nothing how... like that F you energy, that's what... Yeah, like that fuck it. you energy, it's, it's, that's like, oh. that's fire. And um, uh, yeah, if we could bottle that, that, that would be, that'd be a special thing. But so yeah, so I knew I wanted to be in the industry, didn't know how to get in. But I, what I did is I made sure that no door was um, uh, closed. So I opened every single door in the music industry. Most people were like, no, you haven't got the experience. Um, I'll give you like oh, 8K a year or something ridiculous. I was on actually a really good salary in my corporate role. So I, like I said, I had a, um, a night that I hosted. I did a radio show, managed bands. None of them were making any money. It was only until I started managing your band, started managing your PR, that something sort of set a light. I could see that my skill set lent itself really well to being a publicist. It was a real natural, organic mo movement. It was serendipitous in the sense that we paid for a PR um, agent to work your EP. They did a bad job. I jumped in. Suddenly, it exploded in terms of the results that I created. Another band heard how good I was on that campaign, Normanton Street. I worked with them. Then it just grew, 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 grew to the point where actually I was ready to quit my job. And I did that. 1st of May, 2016, told my boss I was leaving. He thought I was mad. I told him I was about to go and set up a PR company. He thought I was absolute bananas. And then as I was working my notice that last week, I found out I was pregnant. So it was a crazy year. 2016 was crazy because I was like, obviously nurturing an unborn baby and setting up a business with you, which was just insane. Well, I knew that we had to make it work. There was no, oh, you know, let's see how this goes. I was like, fuck this, this has got to work. I want, you know, I want to be a role model to my daughter. I want to be a role model to my family, to people in the industry, to women to show that you can make it. Because I think everyone always thinks that when you're pregnant, you're kind of part, it, it's game over, see you later, see you in a few years time. Couldn't do that, you know, uh, because obviously we, we had a, a baby to look after. So yeah, so it was quite crazy, wasn't it, those first few years, like bottle feeding, tag teaming with a baby, running up to London, running to awards. Knowing that there's no other option is a massive driver, motiv motivational oh, thing, I think. If you do that, you can never go wrong. You never work a day in your life, actually. I, I still believe that. So I was willing to do 16 hours in the office. We were fueled by coffee in those first few years. We literally used to mainline coffee, didn't we? At, coffee at 3-3, loved it, loved that place. And um, you used to say, I don't want to sleep. I literally just want to stay up all night, work, and get into the office again next morning. <laughs> And we kind of we kind of were a bit like that for those first three years, weren't we? Where literally it was just so exciting, like you know we were growing this thing and like people were coming to work for us, and we we're like, wow, we create this really cool community. And the company grew and grew and grew, and you know we needed a, an assistant to support me when Benetta was born, and then in came another um, assistant, and then another and then another, and like fast forward seven years, we've got almost a team of like thirty scattered all over the place and it's amazing we've created a community and yeah. um, i think that's one of the things that people say they always love about liberty that work with us is the culture we've created internally <laughs> next so where are we going next are we going to make it into another seven years we, we just celebrate seven years what next for liberty 